When we move a heavy weight as fast as we can, we can only move very slowly. When we move a light weight as fast as we can, we can move very quickly. And this is because of the force-velocity relationship of muscle fibres. When a muscle fibre shortens slowly, it produces a large number of simultaneous actin myosin cross bridges. And these cross bridges are what produce force. So a large number of actin myosin cross bridges means a lot of force. When a muscle fibre shortens quickly, it can only produce a small fraction of those same actin myosin cross bridges at the same time. And this means that the fibre produces a lot less force. When the fibre shortens slowly, the actin myosin cross bridge forms and then remains attached for longer than when the fibre shortens quickly. Essentially, when the fibre is shortening quickly, the actin myosin cross bridge is detaching a lot faster than it would do when the fibre is shortening slowly. And this is why, when the fibres are shortening slowly, they can form a lot more simultaneous cross bridges than when the fibre is shortening quickly, because the detachment rate is faster when the fibre is shortening quickly. The point on the force-velocity relationship that we work when we're strength training affects the adaptions that result. So when we lift heavy weights, we have to move slowly. Therefore, the muscle fibre shortens slowly, and therefore the muscle fibre produces a lot of tension. This leads to adaptions to that muscle fibre that are triggered by the high level of tension. When we lift light weights quickly, we don't have anywhere near that level of tension on the individual muscle fibres, so we don't get those adaptions that are triggered by tension on individual muscle fibres. But what we do get are adaptions that are triggered by the very fast muscle fibre shortening velocities. When we lift a heavy weight, we have to produce a lot of force. To produce a lot of force, the muscle fibres have to shorten slowly because of the force-velocity relationship. And this means that each individual muscle fibre in the muscle, as well as the muscle as a whole, produce high levels of mechanical tension. And these high levels of mechanical tension then produce certain adaptions that help us lift heavier weights in the future. However, these same adaptions are not necessarily helpful for lifting light weights quickly in the future. The four adaptions that happen after heavy strength training, which are either neutral or not particularly helpful for producing force at high speeds, are hypertrophy, lateral force transmission, fibre type shifts and antagonist coactivation. And all of these are essentially triggered by high levels of tension, either at the muscle fibre level or at the whole muscle level. So hypertrophy is largely determined by the amount of tension that each individual muscle fibre experiences and how long it experiences that tension for. So when we lift heavy weights, we have to move slowly, so a large amount of tension is experienced by each fibre and that leads to a lot of hypertrophy. When we move uh, quickly, when we lift a light weight, uh, that doesn't happen because the tension on each muscle fibre is a lot lower. Now, we normally assume that hypertrophy is beneficial for producing force at all speeds, but that's not completely true. When we increase the size of a muscle, we increase its internal moment on length. And when we do that, it means that the fibre shortening velocity has to be faster for the same joint angular velocity. Essentially, the muscle has to travel through a longer distance. And that essentially means that your fibre shortening velocity is less effective than it was previously. One of the key adaptions that happens after heavy strength training is an increase in the amount of force that's transmitted laterally from the muscle fibre to its surrounding collagen layer. And that collagen layer is what then transmits the force to the tendon. We think that this increase in the ability to transmit force laterally is caused by an increase in the number of attachments or costumers between the muscle fibre and the collagen layer. And increasing this number of attachments increases the maximum amount of force that each fibre can produce, even without increasing its size. However, what it also does is it decreases the maximum shortening velocity of the muscle fibre because it increases the resistance to shortening by inserting lots more attachments between the fibre and its surrounding collagen layer. This makes an increase in lateral force transmission very effective for improving force when the muscle fibre is shortening slowly, so against heavy loads, but much, much less effective for increasing force when the fibre is shortening quickly, so against light loads. When muscle fibres are exposed to mechanical loading, 
they tend to shift from a less oxidative type to a more oxidative type. And this happens pretty much regardless of what the type of activity is that we're doing, whether it's strength training or cardiovascular exercise or whatever. However, it does happen to a greater degree when mechanical loading and muscle activation are higher. So if we do higher volumes of exercise, we tend to experience a, a larger shift. Or if we do uh, strength training with heavier loads than with lighter loads, we tend to see a larger shift. So in general, after heavy strength training, we'll see a bigger shift from type 2 X fibres to type 2 A fibres than we will after light load strength training um, because the mechanical tension is a lot greater when lifting heavy loads. So this has a big impact on the uh, shortening velocity of the muscle because type 2 X fibres are a lot faster than type 2 A fibres. So as we uh, do heavy strength training, we'll experience a big shift uh, in muscle fibre shortening velocity. But when we do light load strength training with fast bar speeds, that same reduction in the maximum capacity of the muscle fibres to shorten won't happen. When we perform a strength training exercise, there are several different groups of muscles that are active at any one time. The agonist muscles are responsible for performing the movement, synergist muscles are responsible for supporting the movement, and antagonist muscles resist the movement. And the primary role that antagonist muscles have is to support the joint that uh, the agonist muscles are um, using as a lever. Now, if we increase the amount of antagonist uh, muscle activation, that increases the amount of support of the joint, but it also reduces the effective joint torque, the turning force that the agonist muscle can produce. So when we produce high levels of mechanical tension with the agonist muscle because it's shortening slowly, we tend to experience large amounts of antagonist muscle activation in order to support the joint. When we uh, only produce small amounts of mechanical tension um, because we're moving very quickly, then we experience less antagonist muscle activation at the same joint. Now, when we uh, conduct long-term strength training with, uh, with heavy loads, that tends to condition us to produce high levels of antagonist muscle activation. And this is a, a negative, uh, has a negative effect when we're trying to move quickly because we don't need that level of joint support when we have uh, only low levels of mechanical tension um, being produced at the joint. Um, conversely, when we do long-term uh, strength training with light loads, we tend to condition the joint to not need that degree of support from the antagonist muscle, and therefore we get used to, we become accustomed to um, performing the same movements with uh, a much lower level of antagonist activation. So, Strength training with light loads tends to cause a reduction in antagonist activation at a joint and that allows us to produce more force even though the agonist muscle is only producing the same amount of force in both cases. When we lift light weights quickly, the muscle fibres also shorten very quickly and this means they only produce low levels of mechanical tension. Because they only produce low levels of mechanical tension, they don't produce some of the same adaptions that happen after heavy strength training. And this is why heavy strength training and strength training with light loads produce different effects. But there are also specific adaptions that happen after strength training with light loads and fast bar speeds that are triggered by the fast shortening velocities of the muscle fibers and not by the absence of mechanical tension. Two really important adaptions that happen after strength training with light loads that are triggered by the fast muscle fibre shortening velocities are the increase in rate coding and the change in the single fibre contractile properties. Muscle fibres produce force once they're activated. However, as soon as the muscle fibre is activated, it deactivates again and stops producing force. So the way that we continue producing force with the muscle fibre over a period of time is by sending continuous signals from the central nervous system. And the rate of these signals is called rate coding. So very fast levels of rate coding maintain a, a consistent level of force being produced by muscle fibre over a period of time, whereas lower levels of rate coding don't. So um, the important thing here is that when a muscle fibre is shortening very quickly, then the detachment rate of its actin myosin cross bridges is very high. So a high level of rate coding can compensate for that high detachment rate 
by forming new actin myosin crossbridges as fast as the older ones are detaching. At slow uh, contraction speeds, when muscle fibers are shortening slowly and producing high forces against uh, heavy objects, um, that high level of rate coding isn't necessary because the, um, the detachment rate of the actin myosin crossbridges is a lot lower. So in a sense, a high level of rate coding during a fast muscle contraction is essentially a compensation for the fast detachment rate of the actin myosin crossbridges. So when we do strength training with light loads and fast bar speeds, we tend to um, experience high levels of rate coding, and that conditions us to produce high levels of rate coding in the future, and that enables us to produce faster um, contraction velocities and um, higher forces at those fast contraction velocities. Lifting light weights quickly involves moving quickly, and this involves fast muscle fiber shortening velocities. Fast muscle fiber shortening velocities seem to trigger adaptions inside the muscle fibers themselves that make them quicker in the future. The most interesting thing about this is that this happens even within specific muscle fiber types. So type 2A fibers or type 2X fibers get faster after strength training with very light loads and fast bar speeds. And that doesn't happen after strength training with, with heavy loads. The way that we define fiber type conventionally is by reference to the myosin heavy chain isoform. Now, it's possible that the increases in um, fiber shortening velocity that happen after strength training with light loads and fast bar speeds could relate to changes in myosin light chain isoforms or in other sarcomeric proteins um, entirely. Um, we don't know yet. Um, but the key point is that the, uh, the fast bar speeds do seem to trigger an increase in the ability of the muscle fibre itself to shorten quickly. Leaving aside differences in coordination, there are essentially six ways in which the adaptions from heavy strength training and light load strength training differ. Um, now, four of those relate to the differences in the levels of mechanical tension, and two of them relate to the differences in uh, muscle fibre shortening velocity. So, the levels of mechanical tension are much higher when lifting heavy loads, and, and that's because of the, the slow fibre shortening velocities. And these um, slow fibre shortening velocities mean that um, the heavy loads produce greater hypertrophy, greater lateral force transmission, greater fibre type shifts, and larger um, amounts of antagonist uh, coactivation than strength training with light loads. Uh, conversely, um, fast fibre shortening velocities that happen when we're strength training light loads cause um, a greater increase in rate carrying and a greater increase in the um, single fibre shortening velocity um, of each muscle fibre, regardless of its type. Overall, these differences in the adaptions between the two types of strength training are why light load strength training with fast bar speeds is so much more effective for improving our ability to produce force at high speeds than heavy strength training.